like and subscribe right now, or else this will be in your bed tonight. r slash ask reddit by planet reddit, prisoners of reddit that served long sentences. What was the biggest culture shock to you once you were released? First day out I went to McDonald's and they changed the soda fountains to touchscreen and let you add flavors and stuff blew my mind. With the coke free style machines like that you can also download the coca cola app and create your own drinks. The machines are connected to the internet for automatic software updates and such. This also lets the app send it your custom mix. I've never cared to do it but it's cool nonetheless. Damn I've never been locked up and I didn't know this thanks. You should go commit a crime so you can try it once you get out. The dishwasher at my old job served 26 years for murder. He was 21 when he went in. Came out to a completely different world. I remember him constantly asking me questions to look up on my smartphone. And I never got why. Finally I convinced him to get one and spent hours walking him through it. Then I realized he thought my phone's sole functionality was to look up info and was taken aback at how much other stuff smartphones can do. The nicest man in the world. Still keep up with him to this day. For those interested in the story, he'll share. Also might add that he is very open with sharing his story because he has served his time and moved on. He grew up in a very poor area. His parents worked in the custodial arts at a well-known public university. His description of the town he lived in was a total culture shock to me. Very ghetto. Tons of crime. Some guy had been repeatedly raping his girlfriend at the time and told him if he raped her one more time, he'd kill him. After it happened again, he said he went to his house, buried a clip in his chest, went home and waited for the police to arrive. I remember him saying how he told his dad what he did when he got home and had already accepted the fact he's going to prison. Not the worst reason to murder someone. At 21, we more often than not, have an underdeveloped fully developed frontal lobe, which among other things, inhibits impulse cascades. Yay. But it is understandable for anyone to be really angry at someone when they raped your girlfriend multiple times. I work at a global fast food chain, and one guy and a woman entered. The guy was covered with tattoos. I was at the register taking orders and overheard the guy say what the hell is this, referring to the kiosk. He and the woman ended up ordering from me and not the kiosk. The dude said to me, you go away for a while and everything changes. It's crazy. He was a really nice dude and it was kind of wholesome to see the woman teaching him about new technology. When I was 18 so back in 2001, my high school co-op placement thought it would be a good idea for me and another student to escort a freshly released inmate around. As we got to walking and talking he told us how he went in for mad slaughter, which he admitted he did, and was pinned for a murder inside, which he said he didn't do. I believed him. He admitted the first thing. That's when the other student and I were like WTF. He saw a $2 coin, we're Canadians, and his mind was blown. He also had designs on a home based tattoo business. He was looking for a craft store and thought stitches, clothing store, was one. We had to explain stuff to him, aside from him telling me to beware of sex traffickers and then kinda asking me out on a date. He was pretty nice. I told my mom when I got home though, she hit the roof. Without parents knowledge, yeah I'd hit the roof 218 or no. This is such a cool story, thanks for sharing. Not me, but my uncle came back from prison after 20 years or something because of something that I am not informed about, probably robbery based on what I've heard, but regardless, here's a funny story. So essentially he came back from jail and he came back to our house just to see the family. And I thought I'd mess with him knowing that he wasn't accustomed to future capabilities. I just told my house bot to turn on the lights in the living room as we walked in. I look back, and his face was like he just saw a ghost. Funniest shit I'd ever seen. You should have stopped and said in your best robot voice, Skynet, activate lights. Definitely, would have tripped him out even more. I can't wait till he comes back to visit. Just don't tell him about any of the actual Terminator movies released since he went to jail. I've heard it said that carpeted floors are pleasantly shocking after years of walking on nothing but cement. I can relate to this. I worked as a tree planter for an entire summer, where you're walking around on bumpy forest terrain, dodging roots, mud, dips, etc for 12 hours every day. Coming back to civilization and walking on a carpet felt like I was floating. 
I can only imagine how it would have felt after years. How did you get that job? I applied directly though a tree planting contractor. If you google tree planting summer jobs online, you'll see a few pop up and you can go from there if you're interested. My stepdad got out after serving 25 years got out in winter 2008 and was shocked the first time he saw a remote car starter. He was till one institution time so was up every day at 6am eating when I woke up for breakfast before school. He went out to get the paper and saw my mom's car was running without her inside it and came running in and was shocked. Your mother's car is running but she's still upstairs getting ready for work. He said. I replied. Yeah she does that to get it warm before she gets in in the morning. So she keeps it running all night long? He asked. Never occurred to me that I'd have to spend 10 minutes explaining remote starters to a 52 year old that morning. Let alone showing him how it works. Good guy. My stepdad was. To be fair, I didn't know there was such a thing as a remote starter either, and I've never been in prison, live in a developed country UK and own a brand new Mercedes, so it's not like I'm out of the loop. Pretty standard in Canada due to the cold weather I am guessing. A lot of vehicles have them from the factory now or you can get an aftermarket one installed for a few hundred bucks. I couldn't live without one. I just sit in the car and freeze until it gets warm builds character. Worked with a guy that became obsessed with electronics and new vehicles, like he was impressed with the stock radio in my work truck. When he got a car a couple of the guys helped install a radio with OnStar in it. What's OnStar? I'm GM sales consultant. It's basically on board AAA with more features. Roadside assistance. Stolen vehicle tracking. Emergency crash response. Built and Wi-Fi. Ability to start your car unlock doors blah 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 with your My Chevy Book GMC app on your phone. Standard on all new GM vehicles. Kit car from Knight Rider if you were in prison for a while lol. I interviewed a dude who went in for rape and murder in the early 80s and was released a few years ago because of DNA testing. It wasn't cell phones or the internet that threw him. He knew about that stuff pretty well. It was the cars. He was a mechanic before he was sentenced and he said cars now are so different and have so much electronics. My father who has been a mechanic since the 80s says the same thing. He never went to prison so I guess it really has changed a lot if even someone who worked the entire time noticed. He'd have seen. The switch from carburetors to fuel injection. The phasing out of drum brakes in favor of disc. Introduction of airbags. Massive changes in headlight configuration and technology, the shift from manual controls to power controls, to keyless entry, and then to smart keys, dual clutch transmissions, onboard diagnostics, tire pressure monitoring, backup cameras, and that's just scratching the surface. Me. I hate it. I miss being able to make a quick and easy repair for something basic, instead of needing to waste an entire day, or longer, on something that should be a 5 minute job. Wrongfully convicted? Ducking how that shit sucks. Not me personally, but a guy once gave a talk at my school after wrongfully being on death row for over 20 years. He was from the same town as me, and he went on and on about how when he was growing up there it was almost farmland. And when he got out he was suddenly surrounded by fast food, industry, and development. I feel this. I lived in a rural area. Well I drove past fields and forests on my way to my summer jobs and university. When I lived with my folks. When I go through that area again. There are so many strip malls and houses crammed into subdivisions. It's kind of soul killing to see. There's a short road leading off a main drag near me in the Seattle suburbs. That goes nowhere but up to a set of large white gates. Behind which is a large former horse farm. At the end. Just by the gates. The county put a sign that says. This road will be extended in the future. Just behind the gates. The homeowner put a sign that says. This road will not be extended in the future. I imagine that in 20 more years several of those strip malls might be gone. A friend's brother went away for about 10 years, hit and run while he was smoking a bit of weed in his car before school and ended up killing an old man who was out walking. He was a nice kid and the man seemed like a nice guy family guy too. Sad situation all around. He was pretty shocked by everything smartphone apps could do. 
He knew about this stuff because he was in a low security unit. But he really had a hard adjusting to actually using it. Seeing and hearing about this stuff secondhand is a huge difference to actually using it. His mind was blown by Tinder and Uber. He had a hard time grasping touch screens or couldn't really see why they were better than buttons. He's never even had a debit card and paid for everything in cash before he went in. He lost it when he saw people tapping their phones to pay for stuff. I think he really struggled applying to jobs online. My friend told me he struggled being in big open spaces for a bit. He didn't like to sit facing a wall with his back to all the people and stuff like that. Got really annoyed when people moved or touched his stuff. Also, told me that he was pretty lonely. She didn't go into too much detail. But all of his friends had moved on with life. Gone to school. Gotten jobs. Many were married with kids. They were still friendly to him when he got out. But they were all almost 30 and had moved on. He was basically just starting at 18 with a criminal record. That really does suck. The jail system in general sucks. I'm glad he seems to have such a supportive family. I can't imagine being locked away for years. Only to come out and not understand some of the basic things you need to get by. Not understanding how things have changed. Or why. The world is changing so quickly. In 2010. Smartphones were only beginning to become a thing. Now. You pretty much have to have one. That's partially why I believe prison should have more of a focus on rehab instead of profits. They want people to come back. And so they're incentivized to not educate and help out prisoners before they get into the world. I think they deserve better. A basic knowledge of what's out there. And basic skills. Should be a moral requirement and responsibility to give. I hope he does get his celebration after all of this. That really is a bummer. I'm happy that he's on the right path though if you are interested you should check out ear hustle it is a podcast that is all about this kind of stuff and other really interesting stories i found it on a reddit post for best podcasts that you should check out or something like that worth a listen i love your hustle it helped reinforce the idea that people are not animals they may have done awful things but men have turned their lives around inside prison i love that ilan sp woods got pardoned by governor jerry brown I believe that people change and can redeem themselves. Also, which one of us is the person we were 20 years ago? Came here to say this. Ear hustle is eye opening. For my mate, his sentence is total just over 30 years. There wasn't much. Since he was pretty well connected to the world in his last decade inside, one thing that did stand out to him was the lowered quality of certain illicit products on the streets since he and his connections got locked away. He's long given up that game, though, nice guy, even tries to keep people from getting into it. Used to party a bit back in the late 80s, cocaine, tried some about 5 years ago, it was shit. This ain't Amsterdam, this is a seller's market, coke is ducking dead as, dead, heroin, it's coming back in a big ducking way. Are we in Inglewood? The social acceptance of trans people. Ali. Dear fellas. I can't believe how fast things move on the outside. I saw an automobile once when I was a kid, but now they're everywhere. The world went and got itself in a big damn hurry. Brooks was here. First thing I thought of when I read the question. Not me but I remember trying to explain to someone what YouTube was. He came over and asked me. This was in 2013 and he was locked up in 1998. I explained how he can watch old live concerts people had recorded decades ago, or how he can go behind the scenes with different famous people, to the documentaries, and talked about the self-help videos for basically everything. The more I explained it to him the more I realized just how crazy it is that it exists. The more I explained it to him the more I realized just how crazy it is that it exists. What's that old meme that went around? You've gone back in time to the middle ages. What shocking fact about the future would you tell the first person you see? In my pocket, I have a device the size of my hand that instantly connects me to the sum total of human knowledge almost anywhere in the world. I use it to make fart jokes and look at pictures of cats. My uncle did 27 years for consensual sex with a minor. We live in a rural town which nearly tripled in population during his vacation. And that was a huge shock to him. He said if he was going to have to be around people he was going back to Atlanta where he was locked up, inside. He found love with a fellow inmate, 
This relocation wasn't a total shock. He didn't really have anyone else. Last we heard, he was doing good, visiting his future husband, etc. I do not know all of the details. He went in back in the 1970s, is currently in his 70s, and whenever his fiance is released, he will be happily married again. My uncle did 27 years for consensual sex with a minor. That's ducking insane at least assuming it was in fact consensual. When I was buying my house I looked up sex offenders. There was a dude about 0.5 miles away on the list for that very crime. Looked up the records and he was 17 and the girl 15. He was 68 years old and all his life on the list for that. The kicker, the old lady next door knew the story and apparently it was a judge's daughter so the guy got screwed. Very sad how justice isn't justice. This type of thing gets me, oh. And 16 year olds sending each other nudes and becoming sex offenders for distributing child porn. Come on man. The kid is 16. He shouldn't be in jail for 10 years because he wanted to see his girlfriend's tits. And neither one of them should be considered a sex offender. But you're on the list for life. A friend of mine got on a Greyhound bus and sat next to a guy who asked to use his phone my friend handed him his iPhone to which he said what is this how do I use it I've been in jail for 13 years to which my friend helped him and bought some beer at the next stop and they talked about what's new. Greyhound buses are wild. I rode one through rural western Canada a few years back when I was 17. Sat next to some older, rough looking dude and prayed I wouldn't get beheaded. Turns out he was cool as duck. Offered to smoke me up while at a rest stop. Ended up smoking up at each rest stop after that. Chatted about life. Turns out he used to be the guitarist for some big band back in the day. And now he makes a living traveling around rural Canada and performing music solo. You never know the cool ass people you'll meet on a greyhound. Sad that they stopped operations in Canada now. Though. Wonder what that guy is up to nowadays. It seems so many people have cool greyhound stories. But I just had a creepy guy with Zelda tattoos try to get me to smoke pot with him. Agreed my only memorable moment was riding a greyhound from Chicago to Milwaukee sitting next to a guy watching porn like it was no big deal while eating a bucket of fried chicken. Not me but my cousin was recently in for drug abuse I believe and a bunch of other minor charges but when he got out he was shocked that things like Google Home talked back to you. Winners don't do drugs. You know what I am gonna leave it. It gives a post character. Join our community discord. Link in description. Not prison. But my uncle lived in the Middle East for about 7 years. Came back in 2014. He says his biggest shock was just how crass Americans are. Everyone swears all the time. So casually. In the Middle East. It is extremely disrespectful. Also how touchy everyone is as well. He just sort of fell out of touch with it. Duck. Hum. I have lived in the Middle East for 5 years. I think this is more in regard to mixed gender touching but same genders touch each other all the time. Holding hands and kisses on the cheek etc. When I was a boy, 80s, I don't remember people cussing so freely in public. People used to consider it rude to cuss around kids. 2. Whether it was in public or not, I actually miss that. My uncle got out of a federal pen after 18 years. He stood in front of the canned meat section for 30 minutes. Comment flagged as spam. I didn't realize what comment you had replied to and I got just a little hurt for a second. That everyone seems to stay in their house nowadays. I tease like a prison. Best prison ever. Unlimited yard time. Netflix. And I can use the kitchen knives with minimal supervision. Remember reading a story about a British criminal might have been one of the great train robbers? Who came out after a long sentence, and said the biggest change for him was the noise cars made. When he went in, he could tell if a car was accelerating, slowing down and how fast it was going by the noise it made. When he got out, he had trouble crossing roads if a car was approaching because he couldn't work out the speed of oncoming traffic. Maybe in some ways the world isn't noisier than it used to be. That was an interesting thing to say. I guess cars are much quieter nowadays. Ha. Huh. There was this thing called Reddit. Did he want to go back into prison after he discovered it? Sadly you're not going to get serious answers because you missed a serious tag and it becomes open season for stupid responses about dementors whenever this question gets asked. Which is a shame. 
because it's an interesting topic. For serious answers, After Prison Show on YouTube is a great resource. Turns out yours was the only one that wasn't a real answer. For my neighbor, who was in prison for 20 years, it was desegregation. My cousin just got out of prison a few months ago. He went in when I was a kid. For him it's mainly the phones. When he went in I think only house phones and brick phones were the thing. Now getting out he got a newer android and can't even use it properly and is put off a bit by it. It's kinda wholesome. I always wonder if you went in in like the 70s would you have to leave in your 70s clothes you came in with? Yes. OMG getting in the car with my grandfather who picked me up off a 6 year term and getting on the motorway. Being back in a car traveling at speed on the motorway was quite a thing after doing 3 years 3 months inside. And just for the record my grandfather wasn't exactly known for speeding. Also hitting my home area and seeing how small the houses were to me after being on such a big wing with 4 tears. In your imagination you don't quite remember them being so small and it's a shock to the system for sure. Not me but some guy I was listening to said the money had changed so much in appearance he didn't believe it was real money when he was released. I didn't go to prison or anything. But I used to work in halfway houses and the like. Everyone coming out was always just completely shocked by cell phones. Obviously they know about them. And have used them off and on. But just the sheer number of them. The touch screens. Everything you can do with them. It just blows their minds. Funny story. Anytime someone came into the program who was locked up for a long time they'd always end up asking me to help them with their fancy new cell phones. And every ducking time they'd go to show me the problem and there would be like a hundred internet tabs of porn. Every ducking time. I haven't read any of the replies. But I would be willing to bet that not a single person in here has served a long prison sentence. I just have a hard time believing they would turn to reddit after getting released. It's the typical. Not me but, my friend, my uncle, my dad, my cat, this person I saw the other day. Well, because the question is for people who were prisoners who served a long sentence, you're not going to get a lot of answers there, but maybe someone knows someone else that's done it. My cat, my cat got out of jail after a stint and was surprised that the floor was slippery. Little did he know I just cleaned and polished it. Broads shaving their bushes. This scientist, turned himself into a pickle, funniest shit I've ever seen. The Legus, they used to be simple. My uncle did 10 years 91 2001 roughly, it was the middle of summer I was at home playing some Madden 2k1 on the Dreamcast, he loved being outside, he would take bus rides everywhere, 10 years of being locked up I guess, visited everyone he knew randomly, he came over in the middle of the game, controller in hand. Oh the game's on. He said while popping open a beer. I was the Ravens playing the Cowboys. Cowboys being he team. I was dumbfounded. I thought he was joking. So I bet him 5 bucks Cowboys get crushed. He took it. I finished the game something like 40 nil. He acting like it's a real game. I figured he is just being silly. He always liked to enjoy the moment. I'm literally calling up plays and skipping replays and everything. Game ends and he gets this moment of depression. Man my boys used to be good. Here you go. He hands me a crumpled $5 bill. I laughed. I had to really explain what a dreamcast was and that it was a video game. That football games don't happen in the summer. He didn't believe me until I turned the game off and on and started another game. He took it like a champ. He was quite embarrassed. He was a good sport. I miss him. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.